first trip to Australia for Alison Moyer for since 1987. Uh, so yeah. what are we talking about? F 16 years so almost. Years, yeah. So it's wonderful to have her back uh, in Australia. And thank God we've got Good Morning Australia now to welcome her to our shores. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Uh, welcome. You too. Thank you. You know, I mean, back in the 80s, you couldn't switch on uh, any radio anywhere without uh, without hearing you. But, but like all stories, of course, uh, we don't know necessarily when was that turning point for you? When was that watershed when all of a sudden, bang, things took off? Um, uh, or took off or stops, do you mean? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really became big for really you. Really became big. Well, it was, it was instant. That was the weird, weird thing about it. The very first song I recorded was Only You with a group called Yazoo, and it became top five all the way around the world. And uh, I had no concept of how difficult it was to have a hit. I, I just thought you made a record, you give it to someone, they put it on the radio, everyone bought it. Fantastic, yeah. you know. And it's not quite like that. <laughs> and it's not like that at all, no. You are promoting, though, uh, a new single, which is called uh, More. There you go. And this is the album from which it comes, uh, obviously, uh, and uh, available right around Australia. With more, how did you find the song? Well, I, I've, I've written, I've written the, the majority of the album. In fact, you know, it's kind of funny when you get someone of my age to talk about singles because I don't go and buy singles, and I don't imagine anyone kind of of my peers to do the same. So it's, it's really more about the album Home Time, you know. Um, yeah, but the majority of songs on there I, I wrote myself. Mm. That's interesting you say that because I note that now so many artists have uh, a track from an album which is not available, just goes straight to radio for airplay. Well, yeah, that's, I think that's what it is. It's just to sort of like inform people what, what the kind of sound is. But I think for me that this album is quite a dark, late night um, album. So it's not really suited, you know, to kind of like lots of repetition, uh, daytime radio, you know. Mm. And um, it's just, it's a darker thing. A darker, it's atmospheric. It's atmospheric and neurotic, mm. exactly. <laughs> which I, I like. I like a bit of neurosis in music. So since we last uh, saw you and certainly heard of you, um, still been working and touring um, or I, Yeah, worked for a long time um, in Europe and then got to the point where I'd made a lot of money for the record company making a certain type of record and understandably they didn't want me to change. So you get to a bit of an impasse where it's like you make the kind of record we want you to make or you don't work. So I had to make a decision at that point what was important to me and I decided not to, to sing rather than to carry on making uh, music that, that no longer stimulated me, mm -hmm. you know. And But the thing that drove me to carry on, to carry on working to still try was to make a record that I felt that truly represented me as an artist before I, you know, the wind of opportunity stopped, you yeah. know. And you, you prefer singing your own material? Uh, it's not that I prefer singing my own material. I like other people's songs. It's just that I find the stuff that gets pushed my way is, is too cheerful. And, you know, I'm cheerful during the day and when I sing, I like to be miserable. That's the mm. way it is. Yeah. <laughs> and for the rest of us to join in the, uh, well, in the I field. Just, I just think everybody else can watch me and feel good about their lives. I think yeah. that's the purpose of me. <laughs> do you have a, a happy life away I, from I, Yeah, recording? I do. I've got three kids. I'm happily married, you know. You know, life is in incredibly good, yeah. It's so hard now for young people starting out because, of course, the, the radio stations particularly, they've, they've got their, their, their fine area of yeah. airplay. Yeah. Whereas, you know, back in the, in the 80s even, certainly before that, almost everything got uh, airplay. Are the kids and record buyers generally, are they still buying from what they hear on radio or... Well, from where? It, I think it's well. It's quite interesting to see because I mean I've got you know two of my children are uh, one's nearly eighteen, one's nearly fifteen. So that's that kind of in, they don't buy records, they don't buy them, they download. Mm. You know the interesting thing is kind of older, you know the mid twenties and upwards actually buy records, and that's why singles seem kind of a bit defunct really now. Yeah. Who are your heroes? Who are the people who influenced you? Anyone particularly? Well, I started out in thrush punk punk bands. You know X-ray Specs. You know I, I kind of well, uh, the Buscocks were they, they were more me melodic. Then I kind of went into uh, in, to watching blues bands, uh, Muddy Waters and um, Sonny Boy Williamson, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Did you break the, uh, the US market? Um, I, I had, I had uh, you know, top 40 hit there and uh, I've, I've sold a few million out there, but kind of more on the underground, you know. It's yeah. just one of those things that, you know, some of the Yazoo uh, stuff is still selling now. We only uh, did three days promotion there and, and, it, and it went over the couple of million mark mm -hmm. there. So you did concerts and things there too? Uh, three. I've done three mm. concerts there. Mm. And how many did you do here when you were over here in 87? Uh, Every capital you know, city, I, I think? I think, it, I think there's about five or six, I think, that we did then. But uh, it, it's always the way, you know, you seem to do world tours on your worst album and that's what I did. And, uh, that's that's why it's, it's kind of one of those things that's really important to me to come back here because I love it here, you know, I, um, the people have been wonderful and I just want to uh, to kind of prove for the one last time that I'm actually good at what I do. Yeah. And, uh, so you would be inferring that well, in 87 you got a, a, a harsh deal, did you? No, or? no, everyone was very good to me, it's just that... Uh, it's, you weren't happy with I the I just material. wasn't happy with it, you know, I think what had happened at that point is suddenly you kind of...
of realise that you're making records because you know they're going to get on radio yeah. or because they're going to sell well, and that's the worst thing that you can do. You know, it's mm. a, it's the death of an artist to, to not listen to your own uh, integrity, and yeah. and that's when I had to draw myself up and say, well, yeah, I'm selling loads of records. Everybody knows who I am, and I'm as miserable as sin. You know, mm. I, I need to pull away and get my priorities straight. Uh, especially if you've got the wrong A and R. I know that uh, when my wife Patty and I made this album uh, some years. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Alison? You haven't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because well, I love the I love the I love the oldness of the sleeve, yeah, you know, well, like the, the well, chattiness yeah, of it. The, but I love the way you're plugging it. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a show to do that. And this record, which yeah, I think you'd like to look at my reviews, which are fantastic. It's it's no longer available. And even when it was available, I used to plug it like that. It still sold about thirty five in West Footscray, and that was about, actually you you saw my wife on the show yesterday. Yeah, I did. Yeah, singing Patsy uh, Patsy Klein. Patsy Klein, yeah. yeah, fantastic. So you're doing more for us. Uh, I know. I'm going to do. Should I feel this over? Which was the lead track from this song. Oh, more is very deep like mm. that. And this is, this, is, this is as cheerful as I get these well, days. It's just great to have you back in Australia. And thanks for coming and doing the show. It's been a delight to meet you. It's wonderful to you. Thank, Thank you very much. Alison Boyer. Boyer. <laughs> and she'll sing for us very soon. In the meantime, here's more. We've been talking about some beautiful material, mainly by Alison herself. She's going to do one of those songs. Why couldn't we have had the Bert and Patty family album on, uh, on C? I wonder... I'll just put this down for a second. There's the original album that I, that I showed before. Well, let's, let's see if this works. There you go. <laughs> so it's, it's now out on CD, but uh, that's the one that we're actually plugging today. Beautiful music from a lovely lady. Should I feel that it's over? Here's Alison Moyer. Could you wake me up when it's over? Precisely, I know what you're bringing me. I keep them on the side. We've gone and never more.
Thank you, Alison. Lovely. Alison Boyer, then. Terrific to have her on the show. Nice to have her back in Australia.